Hey you guys, welcome back to week five of the Royal Wedding Sew Along. Today we are going to be talking all about the skirt. So the skirt pieces are the same no matter whether you're making view A, B, C, or D. It just depends on the length. So I have prepared mine for the shortest length, which is technically the cutting line for view C. But if you're making any of the other views, just, you know, use the cutting line for whatever view you want. Um, you remember we talked a couple weeks ago about the pattern layout. So all of my bodice pieces were cut out from here. Um, and then I moved all the fabric up and I've got my three skirt pieces on the fabric now. Um, so we have the skirt front, which is placed on the center front. Then we have the skirt side front placed um, kind of toward the edge. And then down here we have the skirt back. And you really need to pay attention to the grain lines. Remember, if you're not using a uh, border print fabric, you can pretty much ignore the grain lines for view A and B um, and do like I have and only follow the grain lines for view C and D. And you can see here that the grain lines for view C and D are not necessarily parallel to either edge of the pattern piece. What's going to happen is this edge here is going to get sewn on here. So it's cut that way so that the pattern kind of continues up and around your body. It's really actually a well-designed um, pattern layout for a skirt. And then the skirt back is here. And again, I'm kind of ignoring the grain lines for view A and B and only using the ones for view C and D. But it is a very large <laughs> pattern piece. And if you're making one that's any longer than this one, then you are gonna need to cut your fabric on a single layer and you're not going to be able to cut it folded over like this. You'll have to cut it two times, each on a single layer just to get it all to fit. All right, so I've got all my skirt pieces cut out and now I need to transfer all of these markings to the fabric. These are going to tell us where our pleats go. Um, each of the skirt pieces have them. Um, so the easiest way I find to do it, I mean, there's like a ton of ways to do it, but I like this tracing paper. So you can see here, it's like blue and you fold it um, around your fabric so that the blue side is facing the wrong side of the fabric on both sides. And then it comes with either a um, flat I'm sorry, flat um, little rotary tool or one that's like serrated so that you can just press gently along the line and it will transfer the mark to the pattern piece for you. Nice and simple. So I'm gonna do that, transfer all the marks to the skirt pieces. Um, and then I also need to clip all the notches. Um, you guys know how to clip notches. And then you're gonna wanna transfer these um, circle, the large circles to your fabric as well in the same manner that we did for the bodice pieces in the two previous videos. This is where our pocket is gonna go. So that's why you have to mark that. And then once we get all this stuff transferred, we're ready to sew the skirt together. So I'll be back for that. All right, so here are all of our gorgeous skirt pieces. And remember, the skirt on this pattern is not lined. Um, so we have to take a few minutes, tedious, tedious minutes, <laughs> and finish all of the raw edges. So you can serge them, you can zigzag stitch on the edge, you can turn them under and stitch. Um, there are lots of options for you there, but you have to do all of them now um, because we're getting ready to attach the um, pockets. And once you attach the pockets to the side seams, it's very, very difficult to 
finish the raw edges at that point. So I like to go ahead and just get it taken care of. So yeah, you're going to finish this edge. <laughs> you're going to finish this edge on all four pocket pieces. I know, I warned you, it's tedious. Um, both raw edges here, both raw edges here, both raw edges here, both raw edges here, and then thankfully this one's on the fold, so you can skip that, but both raw edges here. It is a lot. So obviously if this is not for you, and quite honestly, if I didn't have a serger, I definitely wouldn't do it this way, um, but you could, in theory, create a lined skirt. You just cut out all of these same pieces out of your lining fabric um, and then sew the skirt and the lining the same way. Um, attach the lining to the lined bodice and attach the main fabric to the main bodice and attach them together as you normally would. But I'm staying true to the pattern in this regard and I kind of like an unlined skirt. It's hot, humid here, so as much you know, airflow <laughs> as we can get, um, the better. So I am going to go tackle all of that. I'll be back in 14 days, three hours and 22 minutes. <laughs> okay. I've got all my side seams surged. Say that five times fast. Um, as well as the pocket bags all surged on all sides, except for the top. Um, and now I have also, um, attached the side front to the front and pressed that seam open. Very beautiful. Um, because our, our, um, raw edges are already finished. Okay. So now we are going to start making our pleats and we have some solid lines from when we traced, um, from our pattern pieces. And we also have some broken lines. And so you're going to, on the right side of the fabric, basically I'll need two hands to do it. So you'll have to just kind of work with me here, but basically you're going to find that solid line and you were going to pinch it up um, on the right side and you're going to match it up to the um, dotted line. And you're going to do that on every occasion that there is a solid and a dotted line. Like on the back pieces, there are two. So there's another one somewhere around here. Um, and I'll do this obviously more precisely when I'm not filming, but, and then you want to pull it up and over to the, um, dotted line. And then once you've got those in place, something similar to that, you need to take, um, some pins and you're going to pin down vertically, um, down the pleat that you have just made. So you'll have some pins stuck in vertically there, boop, 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 um, all the way down that line. And I like to use these all metal pins that don't have a, um, like a plastic ball on the end, because that way when you take this garment, um, to your ironing board, you can press over the pins and there won't be any issues of melting or anything. And you can press everything beautifully in place. Um, and so like a basting stitch along this line to hold everything down. So the pleats are all done. I love this part. Um, they are really, really gorgeous. I did want to mention that on the center front pleat, you're actually going to overlap them ever so slightly so that at your seam line, the two pleats match up perfectly and then flow from there. So there isn't like a little gap in between them. Um, you have to overlap it within the seam allowance um, so that that point is perfect at your seam line. Okay, um, so now that we are done with all of that pleating, my back pieces are done too, we are gonna start attaching the pockets. And so remember I told you that I like to do two of the pocket pieces in lining fabric and two of them in self fabric. Um, so you have to pay a bit of attention um, when you're attaching them because you wanna make sure that you don't see the lining part. So the lining part has to be attached, has to be attached, okay. Um, has to be attached to the front pieces and the self fabric part has to be attached to the back pieces. And that is, if you can visualize with me, um, when you attach your um, back pieces here 
and you know you've got your side seam and you go to put your hand in your pocket um, the part that is going to be touching your body needs to be the self fabric if that's hard for you to visualize don't worry I'll show you as we um, continue getting this made but um, it's very simple to attach these pockets um, I'm just following the same instructions in the instruction booklet so you can refer to that but basically you're going to you know stitch these to all four side seams and then you're going to place the back pieces right sides together on top of the um, front pieces um, and at that point your pockets will be pressed out like so and so then you'll just sew around them like this doo -doo 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 -doo, all the way down and that will create your side seam but leave your pocket opening so just follow the instructions super simple all right she's all sewn up isn't it beautiful um okay so this is what i was talking about with the pockets so when you attach the self fabric to the back piece and the lining to the front piece when you go to put your hand in you will see the self fabric and not the lining fabric so that's all i was trying to say i guess technically this would be like a line this would be a pocket facing i don't know if you want to look at it that way or not but just remember to put the um back piece the <laughs> what am i saying um just remember to put the self fabric on the back piece and the lining on the front piece and then you'll never have any like peekaboo moments with your lining okay so now that we've gotten all this i'm going to do something a little unconventional and i'm going to go ahead and hem the skirt too um simply because this is a very full skirt and we've got a lot of bodice going on especially the pleated version so just to have like a little bit less fabric at the machine trying to handle it I'm going to go ahead and hem it um, I only recommend this if you are very confident that the length of your skirt is where you want it to be if you made a muslin um, with the skirt or if you used the um, information on the back of the pattern that says length from base to base of neck. Um, if you measure that and you know that that's a good length for you, then go ahead and hem it. Also, if you're making the one with the border print, you can shorten that at this point. You're stuck with how long it is, so you can go ahead and hem it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna play around with my blind hem foot. Um, this is quite a bit of a circle though and it is like you know this edge is curved so I'm not a hundred percent confident I'm gonna be able to get it that way but I'm gonna try so I will report back on the best method to hem this gigantic 15 mile long skirt hem <laughs> okay there we have it our skirt is completely assembled um including the pleats that are gorgeous the inseam pockets which are great and i was even able to do the blind hem on the skirt it's not that rounded at all you shouldn't have any issues doing any hem you want um either turning under twice um or surging and turning under whatever you want um but can you even see my stitches i hemmed and hawed about changing the thread to red but i don't know i just thought that there was still some white and i didn't know if the red would show more on the white than the white would show on the red so i left it out so you guys tell me i mean obviously no one's going to be that close to me or my hem i hope not um anyways so but i mean full disclosure if you want to see there's like millimeters of it um I, I will say on a solid color fabric blind hem foot all the way and this is what it looks like on the inside so I did end up surging the hem and flipping it under um and then those extra stitches are what makes up the blind hem one more small detail is that I just wanted to point out that I did not sew up any of the center back um we'll talk more about this when we go to install the zipper but for me it's easier to install the zipper um when when it's not um sewn together at any point um so i'll show you the method that i prefer for the zipper in a couple of weeks but for now we've got a bodice um and we've got a skirt so next week we will get to work on the linings oh 
Did I already say this? I can't even remember what I've said and what I haven't. The skirts are the exact same for both versions. So whether you're making AB or CD, you'll use this method to make your skirt. Okay, so next week is the linings and we'll go over both linings in one video in one week. So I will see you all back here then. Thank you, bye.